Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome to Dream Big and Make It Happen. My name is Bishop Gail Oliver. I am the senior pastor of the Greater Light Family Church located in Santa Ana, California. Yes, located at 1600 West 3rd Street, Santa Ana, California, 92703. And real quick, I will give you the website, amen, www.greaterlightfamily.com. Amen, greaterlightfamily.com. Um, I'm before you today because I have um, some pressing news. I want to thank God for this opportunity to come before you. Uh, thank God because he is God all by himself. And I thank God because he directs our steps, orders our steps. Um, in this day and age, we have a lot of challenges going on. And so I thank God that we have an opportunity to come before you today. Amen. Through uh, media. Uh, we thank God he has us uh, building locally but going globally and so i thank god that he's also given us this word a message for all of us to receive and one thing i need to go ahead and share with you um, as we get ready to move forward i want to make sure that you have your bible uh, pen tablet something to take down notes um, i'm pretty sure you're going to hear some things that's very powerful because we serve a powerful god and i thank god once again for Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose on the third day. I also thank God for the Holy Spirit that rests, rule, and abide in God's children. Amen. So, so no further ado, uh, let's go ahead and open up in prayer, and we will get started as we are uh, moving forward into the Word of God. We thank God for His Word. Lord, we come before you to say thank you for your for your love, mercy, and your grace, Lord God, we thank you that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose on the third day. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Your word says that your, your people perish for the lack of knowledge, but it also says because you have rejected knowledge. So I pray now that each and every one of the ears of your children will be wide open to hear what thus says the Lord, and that you will give us Wisdom, insight, understanding, and knowledge, Father, in the name of Jesus, be with us in a mighty and a powerful way. Uh, we thank God for the Holy Ghost, the rest rule, and abide in us, our teacher, our comforter, and our counselor. We welcome you into this house. We thank you once again for your love, mercy, and your grace. Have your way with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, your children say amen. Amen. God bless you once again. Um, one of the first scriptures I want to share with you. Uh, is coming out of the book of Deuteronomy, amen, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, and I will start at verse four, and it reads as follow, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently, unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and godly cities which thou buildest not. And I want to focus on verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thy, when thou risest up. Amen. And that was Jude, uh, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, starting at verse four. And I read all the way down um, to verse ten, and excuse me, verse uh, nine. So Deuteronomy six four through nine. Um, I want to focus on the reason why we should be praying for our youth. The reason why we should be praying for our youth. And we need to pray for our youth without ceasing. And we need to pray for our youth on purpose. Uh, God gave me that last year to, to uh, 
focus and start praying for the youth. And ever since then, he has been revealing to me how the youth are under attack. We know that Satan has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ says he has come that we may have life and have life more abundantly. That is uh, found in the book of John, uh, verse 10, 10. So I want to make sure that you understand uh, the reasons why we should be praying for our youth. They are under great attack. Amen. They are really under great attack. Some of the things that they're faced with, uh, we weren't faced with them until high school. So th there's a lot of craziness, wickedness, going around the enemy is trying to attack our children and you know the enemy comes to do what steal kill and to destroy um so i'm going to begin to tell you some of the things that are going on with our youth today uh it's just crazy and wicked uh so get ready i'm, I'm going to share the truth with you the bible says it is the truth that shall make you free he whom the son sets free is free indeed um, when you have an opportunity read uh the gospel of john uh chapter 8, verse 32 through 36. Amen. So um, I want to begin by sharing with you, our children are vitally important. Remember, God has blessed women to uh, bring his children here on earth. So we thank God for the mothers. In the name of Jesus, we lift up the mothers. Amen. Uh, we need to begin to make sure that we are protecting our children. Amen. We need to understand there is a powerful need to protect our children, uh, especially uh, for such a time as this some of the attacks on these children like i said is crazy is wicked um and we need to have a desire a strong desire to pray for our children to teach our children to lead our children to christ amen and so we were praying we're praying for a revival greater than the azusa street revival we're praying for an evangelism explosion but as we get ready to move forward i want you to know this um god has, has also given us this when we wake up every morning, when we wake up, our thoughts should not be Disneyland, but our thoughts should be spiritual. Our, our thoughts should, should be spiritual. When we, need. when we wake up in the morning, first thing we need to do is go to God, our Father, in the name of Jesus and pray. Make sure you add the children in your prayer. Now, first of all, I want to share with you how uh, some of these young girls are being attacked. Amen. How these children are being attacked. Um, and so many different ways is it, like I said, it's, uh, I'll start with, the, with abortions. Okay. Um, number one, we have to uh, understand that there are a lot of abortions going on. Um, remember in the old Testament, uh, the Egyptians tried to get the Hebrews, uh, the Hebrew midwives to kill the male children. Amen. But they feared God more than man. Okay. And so here we are in 2018. Um, and doing some research just with African American women, there are there has been over 20 million abortions, 20 million abortions since it has become uh, legal. Amen. And like I said, that's not even uh, the total of how many children have been aborted. But we're talking about just in uh, within the African American uh, black women. So we need to make sure we understand that is an attack of the enemy. Amen. And so we need to make sure we're praying and coming against that attack. It is very important that we uh, value life. Amen. We need to value life. And so we need to make uh, make sure everyone understands that uh, Hispanic women, uh, women of color, uh, the enemy wants you to abort your baby, especially if you don't, uh, if you're not with the, the father, if you're not married. Um, there are <laughs> groups that will suggest that you have abortions. But that is not God's will. Amen. That is not God's will. We need to understand children are a gift to us. Amen. And so uh, we need to really understand where where the attacks are coming from. So that's one area of attack. And if you are uh, one of the women who have had abortions, remember God is faithful to forgive you of your sins if you confess those sins to Almighty God. And yes, God will forgive you. Um, there's uh, I've heard a testimony one of the uh, sisters, uh, Christian sisters, um, she came to our church one day and shared her testimony, one of our Caucasian sisters, and she shared with us, I'd never heard this before, but she said she, when she had an abortion, uh, something happened to her where an unclean spirit uh, must have hopped, uh, uh, attacked her somehow, and she had the desire to murder 
Um, once she had an abortion, these thoughts of murder would enter her mind every once in a while. Um, and I had never heard that before, but once she uh, shared it, I said, wow. So I want you to understand, uh, those, women, those of you who are out there, women, if you're having these wicked thoughts, crazy thoughts, ask God to uh, forgive you of your sins. Remember, if you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he will protect you from the enemy in the name of Jesus. Amen. The enemy wants you to stress and go through depression and shame and feel uh, like you tore up from the floor up and that life is not worth living. Uh, but I beg to differ. There is life in Christ. Amen. And he will forgive you. Amen. Uh, same thing with the, the, the males. Amen. The men, we need to make sure as men that we're stepping up to the plate and we are being fathers to our children. Uh, whether we're, they're biological children or maybe you're uh, dating someone or you marry someone who already had children, be a father, a mentor, a father figure to that child. That child needs you. Amen. God designed marriage uh, to have a father, mother, and children. Amen. And remember, marriage is of God. It's God's idea, not man's idea. God said what he has joined together, let no man separate. But of course, the enemy would love to separate. So therefore, another area of attack is marriage is divorces. I don't even know the percentage. I've heard 58%. I've heard 67% of marriages in America are destroyed. Um, I do know I've heard good reports of uh, those who are married and they are uh, what, what you call arranged marriages because they're taught how to be a husband, taught how to be a wife, and taught to succeed in marriage. And so that's another area that the enemy would love to attack is marriages, which causes damage to the children. Amen. And so uh, a lot of times when children um, come from a broken family, uh, they may not express the hurt and pain at their young age. They may not even understand it. They may not uh, deal with it properly. Uh, sometimes when they get older, they can lash out because of uh, the divorce that took place between their parents. Amen. So I just want you to understand, uh, don't underestimate the pain of uh, parents separating or husband and wife separating, husband and wife divorcing. If children are involved, keep that child in prayer, minister to that child, communicate with that child because a lot of these children join gangs for that reason, uh, become alcoholics and drug addicts. I'm not saying everyone, I'm saying that those doors open for your child to go under attack. Okay, so what I'm saying is make sure you're, especially if you're saved, get into the word of God and ask God for help every step of the, uh, of the way. Even when it comes to a spouse, ask God uh, for uh, confirmation. If you're in love with someone and they're treating you right and God says that's the one, marry them. You're in love with someone and they don't seem like they love you back. Hello, ask God for help and be delivered from that relationship. Um, you don't want to hurt these children because you can be with the wrong person and hurt the child that way as well. A lot, uh, another area these children are under attack is um, Uncle Ray Ray, if you would. Uh, some of these uh, men that some of the women date, they, the men come in and rape your daughter and some even uh, uh, rape, your little, uh, rape the little boys. You hear testimonies on, on, uh, both, on both sides. So you need to protect those children. And I would say this, according to uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked. So uh, women, I, I encourage you to uh, ask God for godly men, someone who loves God, a man who loves God, who knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who's in the word and knows that he is to treat his wife like a queen. Uh, he is to be the lead lover. That's what it means to be the head of the household, be the lead lover, which means as the lead lover, you got to be the lead forgiver. You forgive, forgive, forgive. Uh, treat your wife right so your prayers are not hindered. Women, you already know the word. Submit to your husbands. Respect your husband. Uh, husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. Christ died for the church. Amen. And so the husband is to be the lead lover. And then uh, as parents, um, we need to make sure that we understand how important it is to teach our children, to teach them the word of God. You, like uh, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter says, teach them the word of God. In the morning, in the evening, daytime, evening, teach them the word of God. They need to know the word of God. Continue to teach them the word of God. Be just like the government. The government does not study counterfeit bi uh, uh, bills um, to spot counterfeit bills. They study the perfect bills. So because they study the perfect bills over and over and over and over, when a counterfeit comes across the, the desk or the table, they can recognize it because they've been studying the perfect 
Same thing with this Bible. Study the word. The word is the truth. Okay, God's word is the truth. Basic instructions before leaving earth. You keep studying the word and when you hear a lie, you'll discern it. Oh, that's not the truth. So it's important to get in the word for yourself. Teach the word to your children. Amen. We want to make sure we understand your children are under attack. Um, the enemy would love for you to abort your child. Uh, in, in aborting children, some throw their children in the trash can. It's just craziness, but I'm just saying, make sure you understand abortion is not of God. Amen. And then next, uh, these, these children in school are under attack. Uh, think about this. When a doctor uh, helps a woman deliver a baby, he looks at that child to determine, he looks down at the child to determine what sex the child is. Now, if that's the way the doctors determine, hello, if a baby is a male or baby is a female, then hello, okay, God knows he made females, he uh, males, he made females, amen, and so we want to make sure the children are not confused, amen, if they're a young, if they're a boy or male, let them know, you're a boy and you're a male, amen, and if they're a girl, let them know, they're girls, amen, and so we have to understand another attack is uh, on, in, in the school systems, uh, that the children, if Johnny thinks he's Juanita, then the school system has to honor him as Juanita for the year. If uh, Mary thinks she's really Bob, they got to acknowledge her as Bob. Come on, that's foolishness. Teach your children who they are. Teach your children who they are in Christ. Uh, the world is trying to confuse our children. The enemy's trying to confuse our children. But hello, you know the truth. The truth, if you are saved, you're in the word of God, you know the truth. This is why it's important for us to evangelize. We need to be uh, concerned about winning souls for Christ. Amen. So people can get saved, healed, and delivered and get in the word of God because it is the truth that sets you free, not the lie, not great ideas, not evolution, not science. It is the word of God. Okay. It is the truth that sets us free, the truth that makes us free. So we need to teach the truth to our youth. We need to teach the truth to our youth. Another area that these children go under attack is uh, being jumped in the gangs, um, thinking that the family or the gang revert is, uh, um, takes place of their family, okay? Thinking that the, the gang is their family because they don't feel like they have love in their homes, okay? So you need to understand, teach your children that you do love them. Um, let them know that God loves them and let them know that the, uh, what's right and what's wrong, according to the word of God, what pleases God, what does not please God, what opens the door for God to bless them, what opens the door for the enemy to come in and curse them and attack them and try to kill them. We want to begin to have a love for these children. We need to make sure that we are ministering to these children, understand um, I have a lot of friends that used to be gang uh, gang members. I have a lot of friends that are still gang members. When I say friends, um, I'm not intimidated. <laughs> okay, I love God. I love God's people. And I want to see people saved, healed, and delivered. And so um, I'm not intimidated. We're, we're friends because I want them to see Christ. I want them to know who Jesus Christ is as Lord and Savior to repent of their sins and invite Jesus in to be their Lord and Savior. But the enemy has fooled them to make them think that the gang is their family instead of their mom and their dad and their sibling. And so we want uh, that lie to be interrupted with the truth. God loves you. And I'm going to share with you like this. I heard this at a uh, park. We were at a park. We were ministering to all the neighbors at the park. There was God chose a, 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 one of um, our elderly sisters. She's about she's about 80 something years old. One of our one of our Hispanic sisters. And God gave her a word. God gave her a word. And this is the word that God gave her. She said, God has a word for all of you who are gangbanging. Hear me. Hear me what I'm saying. She said, God has a word for all of you who are gangbanging. God wants you to know he loves you, but he hates what you're doing. He loves you, but he hates what you're doing. Hear what I'm saying? He loves you, but he hates what you're doing. We need to pray for our youth. Amen. Another area uh, of which these children are under attack is prostitution, sex trafficking. So I want to begin to uh, um, educate you on the different types of pimps. There's three types of pimps. Write this down. Three types of pimps, okay? Uh, there is the, the CEO pimp, the Romeo pimp, the gorilla pimp, okay? Three types of pimps. Now, I want you to write this down. They're 
average age of attack, the average age uh, of these girls that they are seeking to get on that street, the average age is from 12 to 14, okay? Age 12 to 14 is the average age. They want to get these girls on the streets young, okay? So now let me share the strategy. Remember, uh, Satan has uh, schemes and strategies to try to uh, still kill and destroy God's people. And remember, God says, my people perish for what lack of knowledge? We pray for discernment so that we can understand uh, God's uh, voice, his word. Um, remember, uh, the book of Revelation says, he who has an ear, let him hear what thus says the Lord. He who has an ear, let him hear what thus says the Lord. Amen. So ask God to open up your spiritual ears. Uh, if, if you're saved, amen, which means you have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, Ask God to open up your spiritual ears so that you can hear what thus says the Lord. If you have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, it is very wise to choose Jesus. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. Amen. With all power in his hand. He died that you may live. If you accept him as Christ, if you accept him as Lord and Savior, you shall be blessed with eternal life. You will not be put to shame. Okay. You can read that in the book of Romans, starting at verse 9 through 11. Okay. So those who call on, on the name of the Lord will not be put to shame. Amen. If you do not accept Christ as Lord and Savior, you're trying to cover your own sins. The only covering for sins, missing God's mark, the only covering for sins is the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary for the remissions of our sins. So now I want you to write this down. We're going back to areas of attack, the areas that the enemy is attacking our children, our youth. Amen. And so... Remember I told you there's three types of pimps. The average age of recruiting these girls, average recruitment age is 12 to 14, okay? And so here are the three, the three pimps. Once again, you have the CEO, Gorilla, and Romeo pimp, okay? These three pimps, and they have strategies, okay? The CEO pimp may be that pimp that goes to the clubs or some expensive place, um, um, may drive the Jaguar, BMW, Benz, whatever car he has, um, may look expensive. He may try to look like he has a lot of money and he may have a lot of money. And so the way he recruits the girls is to, he may say, come here, you look so beautiful. I can make you a model. I can make you an actress. Um, it may take him on a cruise, to look at the houses on the hills, the mansions. And then here is the trick. So once the CEOs, uh, uh, attack, and go after these girls it may be something simple like would you like to live in that mansion on the hill okay i want to take you there baby <laughs> baby honey sugar i want to take you there but i'm gonna need your help to get there and that is that intro to try to get them to sell their body um then you have that's the ceo pimp okay he may pretend that he's he has all his money he may pretend that he can get you hooked up in modeling and hooked up as an actress. You're going to make it big. You get it. You, know, you might have that house on the, on the hill, but he's going to need your help, amen, to help him get that money, okay? Number two, the gorilla pimp. The gorilla pimp is that pimp that will snatch your girl. Matter of fact, I said they're aggressive. They can be very aggressive. I've seen gorilla pimps in action, um, and the reason why I've seen it because we've... Uh, um, how can I say this? A good friend of mine, uh, he's a pastor. He man used to be a sheriff. But anyway, he started training on pimps. And uh, we don't like to call them prostitutes. We like to call them victims. Because as we got educated, it's like, oh, it's not that they want to be out there. But a lot of them are forced out there. And so we started uh, really doing, um, going undercover, if you would. And ministering to those girls who are out there, but also locating the, the pimps and, you know, trying to stop uh, prostitution. Um, and so God has blessed us to work on a few projects together. And so one night um, I was able to see some gorilla pimps in action and they were uh, upset because... Uh, this girl was working in their neighborhood, so they started threatening, actually two girls, they started threatening these girls and chasing them, so these girls almost got hit by a car because they're running in the street, trying to cross the street so they can get away, and these gorilla pimps are yelling at the top of their lungs, this is our said, we'll kill you, blah, blah, blah. I said, wow, they're not, there was no shame in their game, they were yelling loud, 
cars are stopping, you know, hitting brakes, trying to, you know, trying to avoid hitting these girls. I said, wow, that's pretty bold. The other thing they may do, they may, uh, if one pimp has a girl or some girls out there, the gorilla pimp may go out there and snatch these girls and make them work for them or kidnap these girls and make them work for them. And so you have to uh, be careful and be mindful of what's going on when it comes to your children as far as their personality. You sense personality change, you sense fear. Uh, you need to make sure that you're talking to that, that young girl, find out what's going on. So you have the CEO pimp, you have the gorilla pimp, the gorilla pimp is abusive. Um, and I'm not saying the other, uh, I'm not saying that the three pimps are not a, a, a abusive, but I'm saying the gorilla pimp tends to be territorial, uh, snatching girls and uh, taking girls to, you know, to work for them versus wherever they were working for. And once you start studying what's going on, there's a lot of girls who uh, wind up missing, a lot of girls that wind up in the desert, places like Las Vegas, um, raped and killed. There's been plenty of stories here in Orange County within the last two years, girls raped and thrown in dumpsters, things of that sort. Um, also, that third pimp is called the Romeo pimp. To me, the Romeo pimp is one of the most dangerous pimps. And I say this because Romeo pimps will if you would court these girls, date these girls, make them think it's about a boyfriend girlfriend thing. They may hide the fact that they're a pimp. They may drop little golden nuggets as far as building these, uh, the, the, uh, the glamor of being a pimp. Um, and then before you know it, once these girls, they make these girls think they love them. Um, they all, they're, they're dangerous. I'm gonna tell you why they're dangerous. Like I said, these girls date them thinking they're boyfriends. And this is my man, this is my boyfriend. But their intention is to get that girl on the street. You hear what I'm saying? Their intention is to get that girl on the street to make money for them, okay? To pimp them out, okay? And so um, with the Romeo pimp, make them think they're in love. They also will start popping up. They'll usually uh, sometimes drive, if the girl has a car, drive her car, drive her to different uh, relatives house, drive her to her church, drive wherever she has to go to her work. So what he's doing is getting familiar and learning where everybody were, uh, lives, maybe the, the parents, maybe the siblings, maybe the children, gathering all their information so when they're uh, ready to attack, they have all their, their uh, ducks lined up in a row. So now they can threaten them. Hey, if you don't do this, I'll kill your mom, I'll, I'll kidnap your baby. So there's threats that come with that Romeo Pimp because all of a sudden, He's like, okay, I need you to do this for me. Um, also, another trick is to take these girls to Vegas, San Diego, take them away from their family, get rid of their cell phone. So now when they get rid of their cell phone, um, they don't have a way to call for help. Okay, And so we have to begin to understand the way these children are under attack. We need to make sure that we understand what's going on. And so you have gorilla, um, a gorilla pimp, CO pimp, Romeo pimp. So with that, I will come back with you to you with part two. This is why we should pray for you. They're under attack. Thank you for tuning in to Dream Big and Make It Happen Ministries. We're praying for the youth. Lord, bless the youth. We pray for those who, who want to be saved, healed, and delivered. We lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus. If you're ready to be uh, saved, healed, and delivered, please repeat after me. Jesus died on the cross for my sins, was buried, rose on the third day. Lord, I do believe that you died on the cross for my sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. I repent of my sins. I invite you to my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, save me. If you just said that prayer, congratulations. You are saved. Heaven rejoices. One sinner repents. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to Dream Big and Make It Happen Ministries. God bless you. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.